Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today we're talking about productivity how to get more done without sacrificing quality work or excellence. And our quote today comes from Benjamin Franklin, lost time is never found again. How awesome is that quote? It's a fact that we all have the same amount of time and once it's gone, it's gone. So why don't we make a point of using it better? Let's go. As virtual assistants, we talk a lot about productivity. Time is money when you provide a service like we do, and every, every minute really does count. That doesn't mean that you have to work fast or charge by the minute. What I'm talking about is increasing productivity, and that's different. We want to be ridiculously good, right? And so we never want to sacrifice excellence. We just want to make the best of our time. That means we need to identify what needs to be done, prioritize it well, and make sure it gets done. Quite simply. The system that you use to manage your work has everything to do with what works best for you. I can't tell you what to use. I'll tell you what I use, but I can't tell you what to use, whether that's pen and paper, project management system, Google, Outlook, time tracking software, or something else altogether. What works for me may not work for you, but what I want to share with you today will let you know how to manage your time better, no matter which system or process or processes you use. First of all, you must eliminate distractions when you're trying to get things done. Now I know a lot of people tell you to avoid distractions and that's how you can be more productive. But I want to explain distractions a bit differently for you in this episode. Many VAs I talk to have no idea where their time goes during the day, particularly the ones that I'm working with private coaching who are not billing enough or feel like they're working all the time but their bank account doesn't reflect that at the end of the day. They have no idea where their time goes and they tell me, then we, we talk about what they are doing during the day and they tell me that they check a client's email all day long or even worse, leave it open so they can manage whatever comes in as soon as it comes in. I'm going to tell you that if a client requires you to do that at that frequency for them every day, I sure hope you're getting paid for eight hours a day from that client. Email is a means of communication, but it doesn't need to be answered immediately. Instead, what you should do is plan to check in hourly or less. I used to do client care for six and seven figure business coaches. They made a lot of money, their clients were very important to them, and I checked their email three times a day in an eight hour period. That's it. It helped me manage my time better, and the clients still got responded to three times every single day. That's frequent. Eliminating distractions extends far past closing social media, and that's what most people will tell you to do. Leave your phone in another room. I tell you that too. I tell you all the tips about eliminating distractions. Tell your family or people that are in your household not to disturb you at a certain time or put, you know, put uh, your calls on your door or that kind of thing. Eliminating distractions, though, goes way beyond that. We need to actually work smarter and not make excuses for why the way we do things might not be the most efficient way to do it. Remember today we're talking about efficiency while maintaining excellence and being able to find the best ways to do something while still delivering the quality work to your clients is really important. Number two is learn to focus better. Once again, I know you've heard this advice from me before, but I want to take a different spin on it today. The more time you give yourself to get something done, it is just a fact that the longer you will take to do it. If you give yourself an hour to do something, you're going to take an hour to do it. Does it need an hour to do? I don't know, maybe sometimes, but you want to make sure that you are really starting to look at that type of thing. When you focus on what you're trying to do, that actual task, first of all, you're going to find that you can get things done a lot faster if you're not thinking about all of those other things as well. But you also can work more efficiently because you're literally not multitasking. You are focusing on the thing that's right in front of you. 
and you really can get it done in less time. Look at everything that you do in terms of focusing. Look at your task list for the week. Look at your what you've done, um, your work log for the week. And look, try to identify some things that you could maybe do a little bit differently. Or if you're not really good at that kind of thing, ask a colleague to help you and to give you some input. One of my business coaches once ran us through an exercise at one of our live events. We paired up with another attendee and the exercise was to tell the other person five things that we did to help our clients. We each had five minutes to explain what we did. And then the other person, my partner, um, helped me write down my five things as they understood them. So there was a little bit of conversation. And then we came up with sort of five topics that I was able to help my clients with. And so did she. And so this took 15 minutes total, five minutes for her, five minutes for me, and then five minutes to have a conversation and make sure that we both got understanding what it was that we that uh, the other person told us. And then the next thing that we did once we finished that exercise, um, our coach tasked us with the second exercise. And that was for each of us to create a piece of content in 15 minutes. She suggested a blog post. Most people in the room panicked. I even panicked a little bit. 15 minutes is not a very long time. But she said to use one of the ideas that we just came up with. We just talked about it. We just had a conversation with another person about it. So we knew that we had some ideas about what to do. There were 24, or, and that's what she told us to do, is just come up, pick one, and get it done. Um, there were 24 of us in the room that day, and nearly every one of us got the piece of content made in time. The ones that didn't were not that far off the mark. Why did that work? Because she gave us the tools we needed first, and then we worked to complete the task in the time that was allotted. So that's focus, but it's also preparation. When you have things in order and you can draw on those, the actual task time is going to be less. So for instance, if you are writing blog posts or if you are creating content or if you are um, putting together a newsletter or something like that, you want to be able to have times in your calendar where you are actually putting the pieces together so that when you go to compile that item, you can spend less time doing it. And so, yes, you may spend more time through the week, but each task then is really focused. And that's really what the focus for me is about, is being really clear on what that thing is that you want to get done, what is that deliverable, and being able to simply give yourself the best advantage to getting it done. Number three, create buckets of time. Yes, again, this is something that I tell you very often, but I cannot say it enough because there are so many people that I know who still are not using them. So what what I mean by creating a bucket of time is having a stop and start time, a start and a stop time, pardon me. And um, this topic will always make my productivity podcast episodes. Part of the reason that we lose time is that we give ourselves the start time, but then we don't give ourselves that stop time, right? You think, think of a bucket and we have the top of it and we have the bottom of it, or you can have one side of it in the inside of it and then the other side, however you want to look at it. But it is a start and a stop, and that creates a complete bucket of what you are going to do. Now, I highly suggest having your buckets be 15 minutes. But again, as you're starting to learn to do this and to manage your, te your time better, you can expand on those if that makes sense for you. And certainly, there are tasks that will take longer than 15 minutes, although I do still suggest breaking them up into the very smallest quantities, like I was just talking about with a newsletter or a blog post. Pull together your image, you know, get your statistics in, in a 15-minute bucket of time, um, write your bullet points or your outline. And then whenever you go to create the actual item, you are focused. You have all of the pieces that you need, you know, make, create the image and size the image properly, those kinds of things. Give yourself that, that ability to do that. And those buckets of time help you to slot more things in so that when you sit down to do a blog post, you don't have to spend two hours doing it because you already have the pieces in place. And my experience is that when you have these smaller pieces of time that you allow yourself, that if for some reason you miss one of them, you haven't missed a two hour block of time, you've only missed a 15 or 20 minute bucket of time. 
but I digress. My buckets of time will always make my podcasts. And so I will continue to explain them to you until you start using them because I think they're so valuable. So um, I've seen it happen. I've seen no stop time being applied when we're doing things like research projects, most definitely social media, and many, many more tasks. And like I say, my job is to help you run your VA business better and be a better VA. So these are the things that I ask you whenever you tell me that you're losing time or that you're working all the time and, and it's not reflecting or you're not sure where your time is going. These are the things that we do and we implement these things in the way that it works for you and we see results. Going down a rabbit hole and letting yourself do it, which is the equivalent of not giving yourself a stop time, can rob you of valuable time every single day. And if you tell yourself that you're going to start at X time and then start stop at X time and you give yourself a reasonable bucket of time to complete the task, then you're going to start working smarter, right? And holding up that excellence. It is really important to manage your time, not just spend it. So if you give yourself a stop time, that's managing it. And if you need more time, you're aware that you need more time, it's absolutely no problem. You can give yourself that more, more time. You assign yourself more time to complete it, but you're not losing track of time. And you can't just keep going because you're not done yet. You have to stop when that alarm goes off and you say, okay, now how much more time do I need? And when you're constantly reevaluating what it is that you're doing, then you're going to get better at managing your time. Number four is using tools, things like checklists and procedures, automation tools. There are no, there, there is no end to the number of productivity tools and um, things that you can use, resources and that type of thing to help you manage your time better. Um, whatever you need and whatever you're going to use. And I know lots of, of people, not just VAs, who have gone through a number of different things that other people highly recommend and they didn't work for them. I'm not really big on a project management system if, unless there's a team of people working on things. Um, for myself, I use um, my bullet journal and Trello and my Google Calendar. So that for me is a combination of paper, my phone, and a project management system or a task management system more than anything. And it works for me. With my bullet journal, I keep lists. I keep my master to-do lists of everything. And if you don't know how to use a bullet journal, that might not make that much sense to you, but essentially that's what it is, is we have a page for everything. And um, on that page, we list all of the details of what we need to get done. And so it's, it's quite organized in um, an unusual kind of way. But for me, it's a master task list. It's a master of things that I need to get done. And then um, when I want to create something or when I want to get something done, I use that bullet journal list or page to create the other things, the checklist, the processes, the procedures. And of course, if you're using something like Trello, then you can copy um, checklists and that kind of thing on a regular basis. So when I'm planning an event, I have an event checklist and certainly there are a lot of things that go into it. So you're not reinventing the wheel every time you turn around. And so I don't need to keep that information. I don't need to keep recreating it because once I've created it once, I know that I can reuse it. So that's why systems are also good and not just paper and pen. And then, um, yeah, then I use my Trello boards and I can set deadlines. And that makes it really, really helpful to keep on top of things. But also it makes it really easy to step away from a project, whether, you know, because your bucket of time is up or just because you're you're busy doing something else, you can step away from it. You can pick up again really easily if you are using your checklist. I'm a big, big advocate of a checklist for anything that contains sort of more than five steps. I think it really helps you stay on track. And as I say, manage that time better. The bullet journal is the master list. The Trello board is where I manage the tasks or the action steps that go along with the deliverable. And the calendar I use to book my time. I don't book in all of my time. I don't count block my calendar out the way a lot of other people do. I've seen, um, I've tried that before. And because I'm see that we're blocking in large blocks of time. I think that's an aversion to me. That's not something that really works, but you do whatever it is that makes sense for you. As long as it is working for you, if it's not working for you, stop and find another way. 
I do, um, I do know when I have heart stops for meetings or other commitments, that's what I use my calendar for. If I know that I need to be someplace, I book in, you know, the travel time or the preparation time or something like that. And so I know that those are hard stops in my calendar. If I have something that I need to attend to in my calendar, then I have to work my task list and my to-do, my daily to-dos around that. And it helps me decide when I can fit the things in that I do need to do. And like I say, I think the 15 or 20 minute time slots are really, really helpful because I feel like I get more done. Like who doesn't like crossing things off of a to-do list? I think it's really helpful. So you need to use the same process, whatever it makes, whatever system makes sense for you to use. And if that's just paper and pen, that's okay. I think we have to graduate. The busier we get, we have to graduate past the pen and paper. Um, but there are certainly ways to implement it as I have with the bullet journal. So, but you need to keep it master to-do list, use a system or process to manage your daily and weekly tasks, and you have to work within your calendar. So those three things are really the key to what you need to do to get better at what it is that you are um, not doing well at. And then, of course, here you are managing your workload in the time that you have available in a day or week. It really is a great habit to begin using, and you're going to get better at it the more you do it. Practice makes perfect in just about everything. And then number five is stay on track. Whatever you plan, do your best to keep yourself on track. If you haven't scheduled your time and really managed it well before, you may get it wrong sometimes, but don't give up. Cut yourself some slack and keep at it. Block in a little bit of empty time every day if you are new to this, and that that's what you can use to catch up. You can... Um, you don't have to bump tasks anymore. You don't have to look at something and say, well, I can't, I can't get that done. If you have a little block of time, half an hour at the end of every day to make sure that you're getting the things done that you assigned to yourself that day. Think about it. If you assigned work to somebody else, they have to manage their time well. So you want to make sure that you're doing the same thing for yourself and keep honing those time management skills. You can do it. Another tip is to create a distractions list so that you're not getting derailed by distractions as well. All that is is a list or piece of paper that you keep beside your desk or your workspace so that anything that you think of that might throw you off course, you can write down on that list and it just takes a couple of seconds, it gets it out of your brain and then you know you can actually attend to it later. You're not going to forget, which is usually why we jump to another task because we don't want to forget about something, but your your work that you are doing right now is the priority. You set it that way and you need to hold yourself accountable to keep it that, that, that way. And the thing that you're thinking about or that you're getting distracted by is not really usually the thing that you need to do now. So write it on the distractions list, give it the time that it needs. Next time you decide to do your calendar management, that's when you can slot that task in. Maybe that goes into your 20 or 30 minutes at the end of every day. That's okay too. So, but just remember the lost time is never found again. And when you start to change the habits you have around your time, especially if you know that you're not doing it well and you want to do it well, you need to start to manage it better you're going to get a lot less, or pardon me, you're going to get a lot more done in less time. I guarantee you, just like we did with our blog posts in our, in our mastermind group, and you're not going to lose any excellence. In fact, you'll probably become even more excellent because now you really are working at your time and you are focusing on the things that you are telling yourself are priorities. That's all I've got for you this week. If you need some help getting more productive and managing your time better, please reach out to me at tracy at yourvamentor.com. I've helped hundreds of VAs through their challenges and got them on their way to the next thing. And I would love to do the same thing for you. I do private coaching and my new mastermind, the virtual circle registration is open now. Maybe one of those options is right for you. That's all I've got for you this week. Thank you for tuning in to learn to become a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.